morning. Welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church. It's good to have you in God's house. And a special welcome to our guests with us today. Thank you for joining us. And uh, our guest uh, preacher as well, James Sharon. Uh, I'll introduce him more later. Our theme for worship today is, is how we trust in God to provide for us for, for everything we need. You'll see our Bible readings uh, speak about that today. Well, let's begin with our first song, Oh How Good Is Christ the Lord. And there's some special instructions here. If you're a part of the small choir for that song, you can uh, begin getting ready. Thank you. There, we're going to sing it through three times, and there will be a little drum interlude uh, in between the first and, and the second verses. So just uh, just listen to the small choir, uh, follow them as they sing, and, uh, and we'll all enjoy it. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, Gracious Father, I am sinful by nature, and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment, both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Thank you. 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray. You are willing to give far more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading today is from 2 Kings chapter 4. It will serve as the basis for the, for the sermon. As I said before, our, our theme for worship today is how we trust in God to provide. And in this story, we see God providing for his people through his servant, the prophet Elisha. Elisha returned to Gilgal, and there was a famine in that region. While the company of the prophets was meeting with him, he said to his servant, Put on a large pot and cook some stew for these prophets. One of them went out into the fields to gather herbs and found a wild vine and picked as many of its gourds as his garment could hold. When he returned, he cut them up into the pot of stew, though no one knew what they were. The stew was poured out for the men, and as they began to eat it, they cried out, Man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat it. Elisha said, Get some flour. He put it into the pot and said, Serve it to the people to eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. A man came from Baal Shalashah, bringing the man of God twenty loaves of barley bread, baked from the first ripe grain, along with some heads of new grain. Give it to the people to eat, Elisha said. How can I set this before a hundred men? The servant asked. But Elisha answered, Give it to the people to eat. For this is what the Lord says. They will eat and have some left over. Then he said it before them, and they ate and had some left over, according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Today's second reading is from Ephesians chapter 1. And here the Apostle Paul tells us that even before God created the world, God had chosen us to be his beloved children. That's one of the most wonderful reasons why we can trust God to provide. He's had us on his mind since before he created the world. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you all to please stand as we honor the gospel. We'll all speak the, our Bible verse of the day together. Hallelujah. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Hallelujah. Today's Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 14. It shows us Jesus providing for a multitude of 
of the people. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to the heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves, and he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated for our hymn. James Sherrod, uh, Reverend James Sherrod, who served as a uh, pastor in our missionary fields in Japan and in the United States for, for 15 years. And he's come to share a word of encouragement with you from the scriptures this morning. Let us pray. Dear Lord, may the 
meditation of our hearts and the words of my mouth be pleasing in your sight and acceptable to you, our God and our Lord and Savior. Amen. Grace and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I will not reread the text for today. We just heard that from the Old Testament reading. Our sermon theme for today is, it's a matter of death and life. Normally in English we say it's a matter of life and death. But today we'll theme, the theme will be, it is a matter of death and life. Death because our best efforts bring about only death. But God's, God's love is given to us abundantly. You might say to yourself, why did God put this account into the Bible? It's kind of a little bit a minor account. It's kind of a little bizarre, isn't it? Death in the pot. And then a miraculous feeding. But we can glimpse into the mind of God just a little bit from his inclusion of this in God's word. The Apostle Paul wrote to us, he says, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the encouragement and endurance of scriptures, we might have hope. And so God has included this word also for the encouragement of our faith. Now, in order to understand, let's look at the context in which this was given. Elijah was a great prophet of God. He stood against 450 prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. Another name for Mount Carmel, Mount Megiddo, or Har-Megeddon. In the New Testament, it's Armageddon in Revelation. And that is the epic battle between Elijah, one man, one prophet of God, and 450 prophets of Baal. And yet God showed who the true God was. Fire rained down from heaven and consumed the sacrifice when Elijah prayed just once. Now Elijah is teaching his successor, Elisha. And it's a difficult time in the history of Israel. One devout believer named Obadiah resorted to hiding God's prophets in caves in order to keep them from being killed. And after Elijah won that great victory at Mount Carmel, he fled down to Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai, where God gave the Ten Commandments that region. And there he said to the Lord, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant. They've broken down your altars. And they are putting your prophets to the death by the sword. I am now the only one left, and they're trying to kill me also. But the Lord replied, I have reserved 7,000 who have not yet bowed the knee to Baal, nor kissed him with their lips. After that, God had him anoint Elisha as his successor. And shortly after, Elisha watched Elijah carried up on the chariots of fire into heaven, and he received a second-fold blessing, two-fold spirit of Elijah was on Elisha. Think of the great persecution those people faced. Could that ever come upon us? Yes, it could. Persecution comes in waves. It comes and goes in different areas and different times. Remember what Jesus said. When the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? We may face very difficult persecution. But remember Paul's words of encouragement. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril, or sore. As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be led to the slaughter. 
Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither, neither uh, height nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the time of our text, Elisha had just returned from raising from the dead the son of the Shunammite woman, one of three resurrections in the Old Testament. This was a very difficult time for God's prophets, a time of physical hardship. They were, they were in a time of famine. But even more crucial, it was a time of famine of God's word. It was a spiritual hardship. God's word was scarce, and the prophets were being put to death. They gathered around Elisha for encouragement, these prophets of God. They were spokesmen, just like your pastor, Pastor Reinman. They trained in the seminary of Elisha, and they came to him for encouragement. And we see that he brought them not only spiritual encouragement, but physical encouragement as well. He told his servant, put on the large pot and make some stew for these men. Not a small pot, a large pot. Well, of course they had no food. They had to go out and scavenge for food. They searched. One of them found a vine with all these gourds on it. He puts it in the fold of his clothes, brings it back, chops it up, puts it in the stew. Wow, what a find. The only problem is they were poisonous. And when they started eating that stew, the men cried out to Elisha, there's death, oh man of God, there's death in this pot. What did Elisha do? Bring me some flour. He added it into the stew, and he said, give it to the men to eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. Now, I want you to make sure you understand this is not a parable. This was an actual event in history. You might hear some preachers, if they're talking about this text, they'll say, oh, this represents God sending his servants out into the world. And they do evangelism, and they gather the people, the gourds, and they bring them. And then, oh, they're sinful. They're poisonous. But the flower, yes, that is the bread of life, Jesus Christ, makes them whole and makes the pot good. Well, maybe there's no false doctrine in that, but if it sounds good to you, I'm sorry, but it's just rubbish. You see, this is a historical event, not a parable. And when we preach from God's word, we don't put meaning into the text. No, we draw it out from God's word and explain it to you. That's the job of a pastor. Now let's take a look at the man who gathered the fruit, those gourds. Do you think he was doing it with the intent to harm? No, he had the best motives in mind. He wanted to help his fellow prophets who were studying God's word. But what was the result of his efforts? Death in the pot. Now take a look at our own lives. And don't we realize that oftentimes our best efforts are like a death in the pot? We fall short of the glory of God, of the praise of God in our works. Because we are sinful human beings, and the things we do are flawed. We want to do outreach to people, but sometimes we end up turning people off to God. We want to help with the finances of the church, but sometimes we make it even worse than it was in the beginning. We want to bring forth good ideas to help out, but sometimes we are selfishly focused on our own, and we ignore the ideas of others, and maybe as a result, things are not as good as they could have been. The sad truth is that no matter who we are, no matter how talented, no matter what great ideas we have, etc. We may think of ourselves as offering pure and holy service to God. But we are sinful human beings. And God tells us that apart from his righteousness, 
apart from Christ's forgiveness, all of our righteous acts are like filthy, dirty, stinking, bloody rags. It's not acceptable at all, apart from Christ. We need to keep that in mind. Our friends, our neighbors, our family, relatives, they need to hear from us that if you try to please God by your own efforts, our efforts bring about only death. God says if you try to please him apart from Christ, you will end up in hell. It's a sad truth. It's going against the will of God. That's what sin is. It's spitting a God in the eye. It's slapping God in the face. It's telling God, I can run my own life. I don't need you. Thank you very much. Our best efforts lead only to death. But thanks be to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because God, God from all eternity, Christ, humbled himself and came down and became human. Yes, he, both God and man, the Lord Jesus Christ, lived a perfect life to become the Lord our righteousness. And he humbled himself and became obedient to God the Father, even to death on the cross. By his body, by his bloody sacrifice, he covered over our sins so that God sees them no more. Jesus Christ, the author of life, yes, God himself died upon the cross to tread upon the serpent's head, to crush his head and bring us freedom from death and from slavery to sin. He took the poison of sin. As it says, he made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might be the righteousness of God. After the crisis of the death in the pot was over, we read that a man came from Baal Shalisha. Now that might not strike you, but think about it for a second, what Baal means. Baal was that god of thunder and storms and fertility. It was the god, the false god, who the Israelites started worshiping in place of the Lord God. And it's ironic because Baal literally means Lord, but it was never used of the true God. And they even went to such an extent in times of famine, when there was no rain, they would sacrifice their own sons in the fire to Baal in order to try to ensure a good harvest. Well, this man coming from this town that had been renamed from Shalisha in the time of Samuel to now Baal Shalisha, he came with 20 loaves of bread and some grain. Wow, finally, some relief in this family. But as the servant of Elisha looked at that, he said, how can I set this before a hundred men? It's not enough. Elisha simply said, give it to the people to eat. For this is what the Lord says. They will eat and have some left over. And sure enough, they did. Why? Because when the Lord promises, he speaks the truth. When the Lord says something is going to happen, it's going to happen. Does this remind you of an account in the New Testament that we just read in our Gospel reading? Jesus feeding the 5,000 men plus women and children? Two small fish, five bread loaves, and he fed them all, and 12 basketfuls were gathered from the leftovers. Here in our text, we have profound words were written for our encouragement and learning. It says, they ate and had some left over according to the word of the Lord. Our faith isn't based on some idle hope or speculation. It's based on the word of the Lord. And when God says your sins are forgiven, you can take it to the bank. It's true. 
God, you see, gives life, and God gives life abundantly. Listen to some of the sure promises of God that he has given us in his word. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving toward all he has made. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? The pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This is the confidence we have before God. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And he says, Therefore, my brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is never in vain. These words of comfort, these words of forgiveness from our Lord, give us the confidence and strength to move forward. Yes, our best efforts lead only to death, but God has given life. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. And no one can separate you from the love of Christ in God. As we read, neither death nor life, nothing in all creation. We have the confidence to move forward, to serve the Lord with joy and gladness, because he is our loving Savior who has promised eternal life. Go forth and serve the Lord. Amen. Please rise. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, may he equip you with everything for doing his good and perfect work, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him, through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll now continue with the words of the Nicene Creed. Let us can make our common confession of faith according to the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is in the team of the Father and the Son, who is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Sharon. We can uh, you can give a word of thanks to our, our preacher today uh, after worship. Thank you.
Father, we praise you because your love overflows. Teach us to look to you in every need. Be thankful for everything that you give us. And to know that no danger, trouble, or hardship can ever separate us from your love in Jesus. Father, your son fed 5,000 people and satisfied them. We thank you also for all that you provide to support our bodies and lives, to give us life. Make us content with what you give, that we may not covet or turn elsewhere from what only comes from you. Father, visit us in your compassion. Deliver the sick from their infirmities, the troubled from their afflictions, the grieving from their sorrow, and the dying from their fear. May all who cry to you receive grace according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the gathering of the offense. I should you please stand as we we sing the preface responsible. everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock until he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join in their glorious song. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always. church and sister churches are welcome to come forward for the sacrament. If you're one of our guests with us today, uh, it's our practice at our church to first finish a Bible course, a Bible class of instruction, uh, before allowing you to come forward for the sacrament. Thank you for your patience. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith until life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace.
true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now may this true body and this true blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Master, your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. face, shine on you, and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor, and give you peace. Amen. Thank you everyone again for, for coming and hearing the word of the Lord today. And a special welcome again to our the guests who were with us. Uh, honored to have you. Honored to have you here. And I think I, I'm sure I'm speaking for everyone Thank you to uh, Reverend, my father-in-law, uh, Reverend James Sherrod, for giving us the word of encouragement to serve in Thank you. You can, uh, I'll greet you at the back later, and you can also uh, give a more personal uh, thanks to him. Uh, if you can greet everyone afterwards, too, with me. Thank you. There's a couple of uh, announcements today. There's a, a survey, so most of you know our church is going through a, a future ministry planning process, and uh, there's, there's a select a small group of, of us who are gathering next weekend uh, for 15 hours, uh, Friday night, all day Saturday, and uh, a few hours on Sunday. For 15 hours, we're going to talk about uh, the values of our church, uh, our challenges, our blessings, and where we see ourselves three years from now, six years from now. Uh, what are our goals? Where do we want to go from, from here? And uh, we can only have a few people in that meeting, otherwise it will go too slowly. Uh, so we, we would like all of you to share your thoughts. What do you like? What do you love about our church? Where do you want this church to go? Uh, there are some new ideas you want the leadership to consider. What are our challenges? What, what could we do better? 
Uh, we want to know what you think. So there's a survey uh, in the emails that I sent out on, on Saturday. There's a link you can click and fill out that survey. It, we, we want to have as many people and their voices as possible so we can make the wisest decisions and decisions that, that are truly, um, you know, that they're coming from the church, from, from all of you. So uh, all of you, please uh, take some time, take 10 minutes out of your day and, and fill out that survey. Uh, maybe it's just your parents who got the survey, but you can, through their email, you can, you can also do it. So everyone in the family is welcome to take the survey, not just the, the heads of the household. I have a quick question then yeah. the group on that. Has everybody seen the link for the survey? And I'm talking to everyone. Women, children, men, have you seen the link? If not, let's make sure you get it today so that you can fill it out because it is very important. I know, I know we get the email, but sometimes maybe Austin doesn't. So make sure your children get it as well, right? Just like Pastor said. It's just a link so you can forward the email to your children. You can forward the email to someone else in your family that might have the same idea. Right, yeah. I saw a question over there. Uh, yeah, we got a written, written form option. Yeah, you can. Uh, I, I sent a. There was a, a dedicated email just about the survey that came out. I sent it about a week and a half ago, uh, with all of the questions. It's just I think seven questions. You can just copy and paste those questions from that email and, and just write in your answers or type them in. Or on a piece of paper, paper however, that's fine too. Yeah. I could. Uh, yeah. We could. I could. Yeah, we could do we could do a physical copy as well, uh, for written answers. Thank you for asking that. Yeah, like maybe yeah. maybe after worship we can print out uh, if anybody like would, would like a printout of those, yeah. then that would be good. Uh, there we would like to receive those answers by by the middle of the week because our our church planning meeting will be this weekend, starting Friday. So. We would like to see your responses before we go into that meeting, so uh, we need to receive your responses in a few days. So, one more question for me, mm -hmm. like, uh, the link you sent, you sent it to my email. Yep. So, if I finish reading it out, submit it, that the same thing, uh, the same email, uh, my son use the same thing that said from the same email? That's a good, yeah, to, that's a good question. How to be so personalized in it? I think you can, well, that would be a question for Anna, because Anna set up the survey. So Anna's, uh, she's printing out a physical copy of the question right now. You can ask her that after worship. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, you can fill it out as many times as you want. You can just say that you're a different person under the same email. That's okay. If that doesn't work, then uh, we'll, we'll figure that out. Angelina? Yeah, I'm sorry, I haven't heard that question. The survey should be able to be taken as many times as you want. Okay. Please test it. If it doesn't, let me know right away. But I, I'm pretty sure I made sure that the settings are it can be taken over and over. Mm -hmm. So even if you forgot something and you want to take the survey again, go for it. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Anna. Angelina, do you have a thought? Everyone in the family can take it. Everyone in the family can take it. So Chrissy can, third palm, uh, Chevy, uh, all of them. If you can write, you can take this survey. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the asking. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. We're we're excited. We, we want to focus. We want to be efficient with our ministry and, and do the best we can. And uh, we we love your input and how to do that. Thank you. Lastly, uh, there's. Uh, new pastor in our church body who's being ordained this afternoon at four o'clock. His name is Daniel Spouty. He'll be serving churches in Red Deer and uh, Wetaskiwin in Alberta. And so uh, for those of you who are, have, have RSVP'd, that's at four o'clock today, the address uh, for that church. So you can attend is, is in my Saturday email. If you, still, if you need any help, uh, just speak to me after worship. Um, so happy to Many of you signed up to go for that. There will be a potluck fellowship after that ordination service, and so every, everyone going is invited to bring a side or a salad or a dessert to share the.
that church is going to provide the main portion of the meal, the meat and the, uh, the main entrees, but uh, guests that are traveling there can bring a side or dessert. Thank you. Lastly, yeah, thank you for our beautiful musicians and the, the wonderful music they, they, uh, they gave us today. Uh, after, uh, after we're dismissed here and we, we greet, every, greet each other, We'll have a Bible study uh, for the adults, just a 19-minute Bible study in the fellowship hall. So you're all invited to stay, grab some coffee and a, and a donut, and, and stick around for Bible study. The Bible study is going to be based on Psalm 150. And uh, I've chosen this Bible study today because of a question that, uh, that one of you asked during our music week a few weeks ago. So when we're playing, you probably noticed the drums today, which is something that we don't normally have in church. Uh, during music, we were playing drums to some of our hymns, and, and uh, one of our members asked, is, is this allowed in the Lutheran Church? <laughs> is, this, is this much drums all allowed in the Lutheran Church? And uh, so this Bible study is, is a response to that question. If you have, if you have uh, thoughts, you have questions about music and how God wants us to, to worship him, uh, that will be the topic of our Bible study today, just 19 minutes after worship in the fellowship hall. Thank you, and uh, God bless you. Be careful.